Okay, welcome back everyone to my video podcast on the future of business and technology. Um, make sure you subscribe if you want to listen to many more fascinating conversations about the future of business and technology and the latest trends. Today's topic is artificially intelligent robots at Amazon. And my guest today is Ty Brady, who is the chief technologist at, at Amazon Robotics. Welcome, Ty. Thank you, Bernard. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, so this is a, a fascinating topic as robots are become more intelligent, especially when we combine our amazing progress we've made in AI and especially around generative AI. And if we bring this into robotics and the physical world. Before we go into some of those topics, I'd love you to give us an overview of robotics at Amazon today in order for us to better understand the scale of robot robots and how they're being used in, in Amazon today. Well, I'd be happy to. Um, again, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to be here and, uh, and looking forward to this great conversation. I always get super excited talking about not only the future, but uh, how robotics and people can work together in order to enable a really uh, bright future. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, uh, so I'm uh, Ty Brady. I'm the chief technologist uh, for robotics at Amazon. My job is to uh, incubate and uh, help accelerate technology development uh, for the benefit of our customers and most importantly for our in, uh, in employees. And it's an amazing job. Uh, it, when we start talking about the future, uh, there's no doubt uh, that technology plays a big part of that. And our, our philosophy is that we use robotics and automation, particularly fueled by uh, AI, to extend human capability, to allow people uh, to do their jobs uh, in, in, a, in a better manner, uh, to allow them to be more efficient, to allow them to focus more on what matters and to, to really focus on higher level problems. So it's been really exciting. I've been in, in the field for a number of years. Uh, it's super exciting because I feel like it's almost taken us 50 years even just to get here, right? Uh, the, the birth of the computer, uh, of, of course, uh, we have the age of the internet that, that, that has come across that helped connect all of us uh, roboticists and, and share our learnings. Uh, a lot of new sensors uh, have came on board, let's say, in, in the 2000s uh, for sure. Now we're all starting to kind of uh, put these together in our different actuation systems as well with our sensing systems. And then in the 10s, if you can call it the 10s, I don't even know what do we call the 2010s, 10s, but in the 10s, uh, we, we start to see uh, uh, AI kind of uh, uh, peak up and, and do some really interesting things for us in robotics, but it's very early uh, stages for sure. And here we are now with, with generative AI, I think really changing the game uh, when it comes to uh, the, our, our fleet of robotics that we have inside of fulfillment. And it's quite a fleet. I mean, we have the world's largest fleet of industrial mobile robots out there, more than 750,000 drive units alone uh, that we've deployed uh, globally, uh, uh, helping uh, our customers get a, a better delivery at low cost. Very good. So the largest fleet of, of robots worldwide. Maybe Industri can, yeah, industrial. industrial robots. Yeah. So maybe you can give us an, a flavor for what they do today. Yeah. So uh, we uh, have what we call our Hercules drive unit. And what that does is that moves pods on demand. So when you go to Amazon.com and you make an order, we've stored those goods in uh, in our what we call fulfillment centers uh, we, where we physically have the goods. And the uh, uh, the, the revolution, if you will, is uh, instead of a person going to the goods, like with carts and walking the long aisles and picking the goods and putting it into a cart and then picking another goods, putting it in the cart and then packing out that order, uh, we turn that right on its head. And instead of people going to the goods, the goods actually come to uh, the people, right? So we can now move these shelves of inventory on demand very efficiently and store them uh, with a really uh, great packing efficiency. Um, and uh, bring those to a station uh, where we have an employee actually pick those goods out uh, automatically or pick those goods out uh, with a, a, a lot of um, a technology behind them to make sure that you're actually getting the right good uh, just at the at the right time. And it's, it's quite massive. Uh, we can see a 40 percent improvement just in uh, in density. Uh, alone as compared to our tr a traditional system where you have aisles because you can physically store uh, more goods and it's much more timely as well uh, where we went from two-day uh, delivery to 
you know, in some, some cases, uh, one hour delivery. Very good. And the big hype is around integrating AI effectively into robotics, especially generative AI, as you mentioned. Um, maybe you can give us an overview of what you are seeing there in terms of the state of the art when it comes to AI in robotics. Yeah, well, it, it may feel like hype, but at, at Amazon, we have been using AI for well over 25 years, uh, believe it or not. You can imagine when you have so many goods uh, to offer, you know, 100 million plus different types of, uh, of objects to offer to our customers that just predicting where those goods that need to be predicting the inventory models we've been doing that for 20 plus years like even from the early days of uh, uh of amazon um, using machine learning systems in order to uh, really source the right good at the right place um, and we continue to 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 evolve with our machine learning systems of course aws is is uh we use aws inside our fulfillment uh, stack Uh, and it's pretty incredible with the the the, the tool set uh, that is offered uh, to us. But it's uh, there's an application layer of uh, AWS. There's also um, uh, the middleware layer that doesn't get a lot uh, a lot of prime time, if you will. But it has to be very safe. It has to be very reliable. It has to be very secure. AWS offers that as well. And even below that, we actually have our own hardware and our own uh, you know physical systems that enable for a better. Uh, AI machine learning experience uh, what, for us to use inside of fulfillment. So it's a journey that is not an overnight uh, journey for sure. It's it's multi decades uh, in the making, but we see it. Uh, boy, I, I, I'd say I'd be hard pressed not to find an example where we're not using machine learning and AI um, for our mobile uh, drive uh, systems. Uh, like I mentioned, with the 750,000 drive units uh, alone, we have machine learning systems that help predict the paths or where each drive should be at any point in time. It helps optimize uh, the actual flow of material inside uh, of our uh, fulfillment centers. Um, in our manipulation systems where we're picking up large, heavy boxes, uh, for example, um, we have systems that help uh, uh, perceive the boxes and what's the right angle to, to actually pick them up and, and what we call segmentation. How can we make sure that one box is one box and not two boxes? Uh, how can we pick it up so it doesn't open up uh, upon itself? systems that are involved uh, there. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, late, uh, one of our latest uh, uh, drives is called Proteus. And this is a, a real game changer for us in that um, it is uh, certified safe to be around people. So it's a, it's a collaborative ro robot. It can, it can be uh, wherever you walk, uh, this robot can, can carry goods as well. Um, it is very uh, uh, perceptive in that it understands uh, people, it understands Uh, what objects are, understands moving objects. And I, I think one of the coolest things that it does is that if there's a cluster of people and they're talking or whatever, or if it, let's imagine Proteus was at a cocktail party, right? Uh, what was state of the art, if, if you see a, a large group of, of, of people, uh, this the mobile robot would generally just stop and wait for people to kind of disperse until there's enough area for it to safely get through. And how Proteus is different is it fuses together a whole bunch of uh, of, of of sensors, and it just kind of slowly makes its way through the, the, the cocktail party. Of course, always very safely, but whenever there's a little opportunity to move, it'll just nudge itself forward and get through to get the job done. And that's really hard to do. And it's one of the things that we're most proud of here is that can we can we build our robotics such that they extend human capability and also create a safer environment? I think we've done a great job of that. Yeah, that's fascinating because it's really a true game changer. In the past, we've had robotics that sit behind cages on assembly lines in factories. They, they were kept away from people because they had to be programmed to do whatever they needed to do. And now we are bringing in technology like AI and generative AI to make them true core workers. Um, wh where do you see this going then in the future? And what are some of the challenges that need to be overcome from your experience um, in order to make them truly effective core workers in lots of different environments? Yeah, so I, the, the, the future, no doubt, is collaborative. The future is where you allow people to have the, the best tool set possible in order to do their job. Mm -hmm. And that puts the burden not on our employees or the people using the machines, but it puts the burden on us roboticists. We have to build 
the best robotics that bring out the best in people, right? So uh, it's a, a, a shared system of people and machines working together, not people versus machines, right? So anytime that we can make it more collaborative, more intuitive, more uh, understandable, where you don't need this like, you know, 18 levels of degree in order to figure out how to use the machine, we wanna make it very straightforward and understandable to have utility that allows people to do what they do best, which is problem solve, think at a higher level and allow them to focus more on what matters. Inside fulfillment, that's pretty easy for us, right? We want to have uh, the ultimate in customer selection. We want to bring that uh, the, the the goods to a, at a low cost, and we want to have the ultimate in, in customer convenience as well. So, allowing our folks, whether it's in the first mile, middle mile, or last mile, to have this robust tool set of robotics and automation, um, we see a great productivity gains, right? We and, and also we're really improving our safety as well by doing this. So the, the future in my mind is, I think it's gonna be undeniable. Those that actually really embrace collaboration, embrace machines that help people do their jobs better. Uh, those are the ones uh, that, you know, are gonna accelerate. I agree. Well, whenever you, we, we talk about automation, bringing in more capable AI enabled robots, people worry about their jobs and what this means, what will automation mean for the jobs people do today? How is this going to transform their job? You, you hinted to the fact that hopefully they will do slightly higher order jobs that really leverage some of the human capabilities that we have and pass some of the 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 more menial work and the repetitive work to our collaborative robots how, how do you see this working out and how do people prepare for this future yeah it's a great question and, and i want to be super clear i i aim to eliminate the menial the mundane the repetitive i want to i want to automate all of that right we want to create great jobs inside of our facilities and, and there's plenty of great jobs uh, for example, since we really invested heavily in robotics about a, a decade ago, we've created 700 new job types alone related to robotics. So not only so it's it's we are creating a new economy, a new workforce, uh, and allowing our employees to be more productive in a safer environment. And that has that is not really to be understated because when you do that and you do that effectively, you as a company become more productive. And when you're more productive, then you're, you, you have earned the right to invest in both people and in better robots. You invest in both. And to go earlier in the conversation, we see the winning formula of, people and machines working together. So if we can improve our machines, then that allows us to actually create new jobs and create and hire more jobs. And that is exactly what the trend has been, right? So it's uh, what we see is more robots, more jobs when done right. That's, that's good to hear. So what kind of jobs do you see being transformed or potentially even be eliminated? And what exciting kinds of jobs do, do you see emerging over the coming years that people might want to prepare themselves for? Yeah, so when it comes to jobs changing, absolutely they will. Like I said, I aim to eliminate the menial, the mundane, and the repetitive. So if you are working in you know, any one of those three, or that's hopefully not all three uh, simultaneously, uh, we want to automate that because we believe in the power of people. We believe that people have an amazing ability to understand problems, to think with common sense, uh, to understand the big picture of what's going on. And we also uh, live in a world where there's no such thing as 100% automation. That's very clear. Nothing is going to work 100% of the time, all the time, especially at the scale of Amazon. So we need a, a, and we have amazing women and men that work frontline with our robotics, not in just directly with the robotics, but in what they do and what they achieve. So we need uh, things like uh, 
uh, folks to make sure, uh, I'm sorry, we need uh, folks to make sure that the, the, the machinery is working, of course, the robotics that are, are, are working, but also when you have more volume coming through and you can store more goods, you're creating more jobs in the jobs that, that you most definitely need. Right, flow control specialists, for example, understanding the, the flow of goods, making sure that uh, trucks are coming in at, at the right time and trucks are leaving at the right time, talking to, to, to people that are on our front line and understanding where are the difficulties, well, how is the system working and how can we improve? And of course, I mean, I would be remiss if I didn't say the amazing, amazing staff that we have developing and truly pioneering robotics today. Right. Robotics and automation is in our infancy, and we have an amazing high tech team that works on this every day in order to make our our robots even better. Very good. Um, another topic when we, whenever we talk about intelligent robots is this whole idea of humanoid robots, robots that almost take the shape of people. They look like people. And I'd love to take or understand your take on all of this. Is this going to be successful? Will we see more humanoid robots in the future? Is this the place to be investing in? I know that Amazon was one of the first companies to employ humanoid robots. So I'd love to know what you've learned from this. I also know that you in, uh, have made an investment in agility robotics. So maybe you can take us through your point of when it comes to humanoid robots. Sure. Yeah, indeed. Uh, so we are learning. Right, we are interested in all thing robot, all things robotic. Uh, we are interested in, in manipulation systems, identification systems, sortation systems, and things that also move. And humanoid robots, particularly bipedal humanoid uh, robots, have we have an interest in that. Uh, it's interesting in the terrain that bipedals can navigate. Um, we have learned uh, that the wheels work as well, right? So it's not one size fits all for sure. Uh, inside of our facilities, we have poured concrete floors and we understand what the, what the, the floors are, uh, for example. Um, so again, anything in the mobility uh, frame, we want to understand. So uh, with uh, bipedals, we want to understand why is this unique and what can it do differently, right? Still learning, we, whatever it is, it has to be dynamic. It has to be very reliable for us. Uh, and we know that we need to have even more exploration when it comes to mobile systems, right? Okay. Uh, the second thing that is, I, I think, interesting is when you see the human form, the human form is beautiful. It's gorgeous, right? And there are expectations that come with the human form. And I, I am a, a, a big proponent of utility. So robotics and automation needs utility first before form. It needs simplicity to eliminate complexity, right? So if I see uh, a humanoid robot, speaking, this is more speaking as a roboticist, when you see human, I think expectations get to be pretty high, pretty quick, right? But now I am reminded of a great quote by Roy Amara, who is a, a, a futurist, who says that we tend to overestimate technology in the short term, but underestimate technology in the long term, paraphrasing it, right? Mm -hmm. So I get that. I, I mean, I totally get that. And we see that what we've done inside uh, of Amazon with our robotics, uh, we could not do with people alone. And we definitely could not do that with machines alone, right? So over the long term, uh, we live in the applied realm of robotics and automation. Like it is not YouTube moments for sure. These are uh, robots that are working with our employees every day on a scale that is almost unimaginable. It has to work. And what the beauty, the beautiful thing about that is, is that that forces us to be better and it accelerates our technology development. We do technology development with project context. And that project context allows us to solve real world problems with our real world machinery that allows us to do what 
many people think are just very simple things. I just need to pick up that box. I need to move this good from this part of the building to the other part of the building. But when you do it at scale and you have to do it extremely safe and you have to do it in a way that actually adds to the equation of productivity, that's where we have reached the next level. Oh, we have a, 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 amazing folks that are doing that every day. So, you know, humanoids, we'll see. It's a, it's a work in progress. Yeah, and there, there are some people in robotics that believe very strongly that robots shouldn't look like humans for lots of different reasons, because it might freak out people. It blurs the boundaries between humans and ro robots, and others are big advocates of it. Where do you sit in, in this debate? Well, you, if you look at our fleet, and let's let's particularly let's look at Proteus, for example. So Proteus is our our autonomous mobile robot that can work around people, uh, and it's uh, it's moving carts today down in Nashville, and uh, in, in Houston uh, uh, as well, uh, and in Louisiana. We're we're running that experiment, and it's it's pretty amazing to see, right? It, they're moving the carts of goods, carts of boxes uh, on demand uh, at the right time around people that are also moving it. And what we see is, uh, first of all, our employees love our robots. They're, 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 they're cute, they're adorable for sure. And that is a good thing because it means that they're comfortable being around Proteus. And Proteus has tail lights and it has visual indicators. It even has eyes. Okay, it doesn't have arms, but it has eyes so that if Proteus wants to go around a corner, it kind of will avert its gaze and look around the corner. And a person can look at it and go, oh, it looks like it wants to take a right turn. Or it puts its blinker on, it looks like it wants to take a, a right turn. So as people, we get our, 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 we get visual cues from each other. If you and I were walking down a hallway and I had a big stack of books, you would probably give me a little bit of extra lee lee leeway to make sure I don't, you know, tumble the books. Or if I have a big stack of books and I see uh, a mom with a baby carriage, I'm going to naturally slow way down to make sure that there's, you know, uh, there's no chance of, uh, of, of a collision, right? These are things that we do very naturally, but we're getting clues from whether it's body language or it's our, our, our faces. Uh, about how to react in the human world. So where I stand is that we have to get better at human machine interfaces, right? Again, we don't put the burden on people. We put the burden on the roboticists developing the machines in order to give the clues back to a person to live in the human environment, right? So sometimes I, I, I do believe that it is necessary to give human-like features to our machines so that people can better interact and understand those machines. Yeah, interesting. And you've talked about the fulfillment centers and the, the robot robots being used in there. Beyond that, where else in Amazon do you see the potential to use robots in the future? Sure, and, and anywhere that involves our customer, right? So we think about it as first mile. Uh, that's where we store our goods and get the goods at, at, out the door. Our middle mile, where we're sorting the goods to get the goods to maybe it's the right state or the right the right region, and then our last mile, where we actually have the goods uh, and then deliver it right to the customer's door, and that's ripe for automation uh, all, all the way through. Uh, our job, my job uh, with our team, is we're exclusively focused on Amazon. Like there is so much, it's such the early stages, and our team is doing such an amazing job that we have plenty in front of us in order to help revolutionize each one of those uh, three uh, stages, right? We've done a lot of work in our first mile under the fulfillment centers. Uh, mm -hmm. We've done a lot of work in our sortation centers as well with drives taking packages and sorting packages automatically to the right uh, location with robotic uh, arms picking packages up and placing them in, in different uh, uh, bins. Uh, for example, our, our Robin arm has sorted more than 3 billion packages just to kind of put scale on, on this. Uh, we have a containerized storage system inside our fulfillment uh, centers called Sequoia. We just announced that uh, uh, last year. It's a containerized uh, storage system and uh, we can uh, reduce the time it takes to process an order by 25% uh, alone just by using this, uh, this 
containerize a system. That really helps our ship and predictability. That helps us get the, the right goods at, to the right time. And then also at, the, at, at our last mile, same uh, same uh, story there. We, we, we have folks that need to use uh, machines to help sort goods, uh, to help uh, identify goods, to help move goods, to help manipulate those goods. Uh, and uh, it's pretty ripe uh, as well. So, and that's just an e-commerce. Like I, I, if you really want, uh, sure, agriculture, 100%, healthcare, 100%, transportation, of course, like there, it's, it's, it's kind of fun. I will say yeah. it's fun. I, I learned to program in the, uh, the late, late 70s as a kid uh, through the goodness of one particular teacher. I was hooked. I love Star Wars at I uh, saw so the R2D2 was definitely my robot uh, for sure. By the way, not in the humanoid form. I just wanted to point that out. <laughs> I had C3PO, but who's in the back of the who's in the back of the X-wing fighter? It was a C3PO. It was R2D2, and and not only was R2D2 in the back, but it's actually helping Luke Skywalker be more Jedi, right? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um... How far away are we from the last mile automation? This is an area I think that is posing lots of challenges. Do you see any, anything, anything interesting on the horizon? Well, I don't know if that's the, the end state that I'm hoping for. I don't, I, I don't think I'm, uh, I'm hoping for the last mile to be automated. Interesting. I, right. I, the face of our company is there interfacing to our customers. And we take that very, very seriously. I love an interaction where it's like, hi, Mrs. Jones, nice to see you. You know, how's Tommy doing? Great, great. He's off to school. Oh, okay. Here's your package. Can I take a return for you? I'd be happy to do that. Mm, it's connection, right? So now having that, that delivery associate powered with amazing robotics to help the job, absolutely. Having that delivery associate uh, in a, a machine that allows her or him to do their job, to drive the route more efficiently, we're doing that today. Having AI systems understand where traffic is and, and what, how, what's the optimal way to, to do the delivery path, we're doing that today. That makes sense to me. I like that mm -hmm. right? because we want them to, to, to feel empowered with robotics. We want our delivery associates to uh, feel great about being uh, part of Amazon. And we want our customers, most importantly, to be excited for their delivery and to be connected to us uh, in a way that is natural. Interesting. And how far are we away from having robots in our homes as someone that that lives and breathes robotics every single day what's the time frame we're looking at here well you can go on amazon.com and get yourself an astro right in your home right now yeah. <laughs> so what what time frame do you see and what sort of developments do you think are on the horizon to have a, a, a meaningful robotic assistant in our house? Yeah. Well, again, with the, with the broad view of robotics, I actually think the majority of homes have an amazing robot in their house right now. It's such a good robot that people don't even call it a robot. It is so good that it just blends into the background and you use the machine to your advantage. So what's a robot in my mind? A robot is the blend of sensing, computing, and actuation in a physical instantiation in the real world environment, right? So it's not a piece of software and it can't just be a piece of hardware. It has to have sensing, computing, and actuation. And I think one of the best robots that we have out there is our dishwasher, right? You take your dishes, you put it in there, it cleans the dishes, you take the dishes out and great. Could you do it by hand? You could absolutely do those dishes by hand. And what I think is interesting about that example is that if you were a startup in robotics and we didn't invent the dishwasher yet, you may say, well, how are we going to do this? Well, let's, let's watch how people do it. They pick up a plate, they put it under running water, they put some soap on a sponge, you grab a sponge and then you scrub the sponge over the top of the plate, you rinse it and then you put it over on the shelf. So I think there's a tendency for people to go, let's duplicate that. 
So I'm going to need a humanoid robot with arms, with sensing systems in order to duplicate the, the dishwashing experience. And then, you know, technology is not quite there. You fail. You're out of business. Whereas if I think if you open your mind up to say what's going to be beneficial in the people machines collaboration, how can we do this? I think the dishwasher does it really well. Dump your plates over there, let it do its job. When and, and I pull it open like magic, they're clean. It's great. So it's in there. Now I get your question. When's Rosie the robot going to show up? We're a ways away. But AI is accelerating us. I mean that is that is undeniable. Like we're just, the, the AI in all of our systems. It's undeniable. And actually, what I think is really cool too is it's allowing us to think about the problem differently. Uh, if a generative AI solution proposes something that we haven't thought of, that that knowledge is not lost. We don't have to do it for sure. But what it does is actually informs us about a something that is interesting in the design space that we didn't consider yet. So where I'm super bullish about AI, it actually allows us people to be more intelligent and to be more capable, it's teaching us to be more human. And I love that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> That's the vision. That would be great if we can achieve that. Um, the When you look into the future, what trends do you see in robotics that you are excited about and and what do you see on the horizon maybe you can give us an overview of some of the more immediate trends the next five to ten years you're seeing and then maybe even looking further ahead to 2050 where, where do you see all of this going yeah uh so i i think um offloading a lot of computational power into the cloud is a really good trend because if you have to carry everything around and you're not connected those systems become heavy they can become power hungry and they become unwieldy so i think uh the right balance of edge computing making your your robotics just felt enough to have enough edge computing to make sure that you always maintain safety, but offloading the, the majority of it into the cloud so that other robotic agents can not only um, uh, help you compute what you need to compute, but you also learn from other robotic agents in the field and allow you to update your, your own behavior. I'm super bullish on that. I, I, I really like that. The second part is the then our AI systems allowing us to perceive the world better, right? To allow our machines to understand the human world in a way that allows it to move safely around people, to do tasks that extend human capability, um, I'm very bullish on, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, the, our perception systems have just really improved vastly improved over the last five years mm. just vast vast improvement and that makes sense because uh at the heart of ai is pattern matching right it's it's lots of patterns that fit that what's this environment look like how can i match the patterns and if i see a trend in that pattern could that tell me something and mm. i think that there's a, a lot of analogy of, of how we do that so uh definitely there the down the road, I okay. I'm willing to I'm willing to make this 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 statement. Down the road, I think it's not going to be the one robot that does it all. On the contrary, I think it's going to be a suite of robotics that works in a coordinated fashion, each with their own utility, allowing people to do more things whether it's at your home or it's at your office or it's at your fulfillment center i think at the core of it there's there's some fundamental capabilities like movement like manipulation like identification like sortation like storage and for us we have uh, packing that when we master those core capabilities we also call them primitives when we master those then we can put those primitives together in different manners to achieve new utility. But when we have, 
ro robotic system A with robotic system B and C were connected to the cloud. They can learn from each other. They can react better to the environment as well. And then most importantly, they can share their learnings with people so that we can now have human supervisory control on top of our machines. So in my world, the shortest way I can say this is that human supervisory control is a field that will completely change the world when done right with, with, with our machines, right? So we have to build the machines so that we can put our intuition into machines and we have to build the machines so that we, they can understand the environment uh, better, but how to uh, allow that, that I'd say the theory, the, the philosophy of people and machines working together, of people of extending human capability, of collaborative ro robotics, um, of really embracing what we're good at, <laughs> like really understanding what we're really good at and allowing that menial and the mundane and the repetitive to be uh, automated, that's, that's, that's the stuff, right? And I think it's really exciting. And we've, we've had this proof point now for the last 10 years that not only can you do that, and we're doing it for our customers, and we're customer obsessed and we're always going to do it for our customers, but not only can you do that in a way that allows you to be more productive, but you can do it in a way that enables more safety. You can do it in a way that allows us to, to I, I think, have the world's best technology company out there because it's all applied. It's real. Very good. Wonderful, Ty. Ty, thank you so much for sharing all your amazing insights. I, I very much share your hope that applying AI and robotics, that this will hopefully make us more human because at the moment our amazing capabilities are not really leveraged because we, we do have to do stuff that we shouldn't really be wasting our time on. So if we get to that point where we can become even more human, that will be an amazing future. So thank you very much. My pleasure. And for anyone who ever wants to re-watch or re-listen to this conversation, simply head to any podcast platform or to YouTube where you can find this conversation and hundreds of others like it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bernard. Thank you.